what's up everybody it's your girl bunny love i'm back um man i tell you i'm, I'm really grateful for this time um I, I got a couple of days off and i've always wanted to get caught up on these videos um but i i sometimes i'm just so swamped with working and nursing school to where i just don't be having the time but i have the rest of this evening and most of tomorrow to get these stories out um i'd be really wanting to see what y'all think i'd be wanting y'all input you know I, I really am curious of what your opinions are. And, and that's a lot of the reason why I do these videos on YouTube. Um, as you can see, if you looked at my videos, I started out with doing mostly my 600 pound life videos, but now I'm doing um, current news and celebrity news. Um, and there's so much right now in the news that I, I just, I'm so eager to see how you all feel about it. Um, the Amber Geiger situation, Amber Geiger and Botham Jean. Um, I, you know, I just, uh, it, it's, it, it, most of the people on social media have turned it into a racial thing. I don't really know how I feel about that 100%. I, I don't know. I, I can see how they would. She's white, he's black, and, you know, most of the posts that I'm seeing are, oh, we already should have known that. We should have known she was just going to get a slap on the wrist, you know, five or ten years or something like that. I do believe she received a ten-year prison sentence. And that was just not satisfying to a lot of African Americans in the public. They just weren't feeling that. Um, for those that are new to my channel, what I like to do is um, when there's something current in the news, whether it's just a normal story in the news or if it's celebrity news, um, I, I look for a really good, I look for the, the best, I try to find the best read on it to get the most information so that I can give um, a good video. Um, and... Uh, I like to read it out loud to you guys. Um, what I've found, this is CNN. Um, I, I think this is probably the best read. Um, and uh, the best article that I could read. And, and I just want to get you all's input um, on my opinion of it and the article that I've read. So I'm getting ready to get started. Um, this was actually posted today, October the 3rd, um, CNN. Emotions run high in and outside of the courtroom of Amber Geiger, sentenced to 10 years for Botham, um, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, Jean, Jean, I think it's Jean, uh, Botham Jean's murder. Okay. So inside the courtroom, many observers cried as Botham Jean's brother forgave and hugged former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger who had been convicted of murder in Jean's death. Outside, protesters denounced the 10-year sentence Geiger got as too lenient. Now, before I continue reading, I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, I've seen posts on social media, all throughout Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, about how um, it just doesn't make sense that this man is forgiving her. It doesn't make sense that the judge came off of the bench and hugged her. Well... I've also seen posts talking about how um, this is the problem with black people. Black people are too forgiving. You know, if um, if somebody if somebody killed my brother or sister or uh, you know son or whatever, I'd be ready to kill him. I'm not going to be so forgiving. So I, I I like I like to see different opinions. I like to see different views. I'm, I'm just. That's, I'm just into that. I like to see how the public reacts. And um, I, my emotions are mixed when it comes to that. I, I, I feel like it is a very hard thing to forgive. It is extremely difficult. I'm not saying it's not difficult to forgive someone that has taken away a family member. Especially a family member that was extremely close to you i am not debating that shit at all however 
I don't see how not forgiving them is going to bring that person back either or solve the problem. The person is gone. You know, God rest their soul. God rest Botham's soul. God rest his soul. But holding a grudge on her is is not going to get it's not going to get you anywhere. You know, all this stuff about black and white, I'm not saying it wasn't racially motivated. It it very well could be. I mean, I, I'm it's it's for me it's hard to say because we don't know what was truly running through the mind of Amber for her. She's the only person that knows her motive, her intent for doing what she did. I will say that her story did sound a little fishy. It it just did. It did not sound right. It it sounded like um you know the the, the whole situation of she 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 stumbled into the wrong apartment and um felt like she had to draw her weapon I, you know if, if you if you finally come to the realization that you're not in your apartment if you're in somebody else's house then what the hell do you need to draw your weapon for Un unless they drew a weapon at you first and from what i read this man was unarmed so what was the fucking point for you to go in his house okay so you stumbled into the wrong apartment and then, according to news reporters, they had somebody get up on the witness stand on behalf of the defense. And, um, you know, somebody totally unrelated to the case. And he's like, well, um, you know, I've, I've had, I've, you know, this, this has happened to me before, too. I've, I've stumbled into people's apartments before, too, and, and didn't even realize it was mine. And then the prosecution is like, well, did you shoot them, though? Did you shoot them? So, which was a very good point. The prosecution had an excellent point. Okay, that may be true. You may have stumbled into somebody's apartment that maybe you just weren't thinking, you were out of it, you know, you were in a delusional state at that time, and you didn't realize that you were not walking into your own apartment. Okay, so if that's the case, you did that, but did you, did you draw some heat? Did you pull out your gun? Did you feel it was necessary to shoot that person? Well, if you didn't feel it was necessary for you to shoot that person, then you had no intention to kill. So they were basically trying to say that Amber had intention to kill. She had intention to kill a black man. I mean, that's basically how they were putting it out there. And the news reporter was just, I mean, I was watching all this on the news just now, really trying to get, you know, um really educated about the story so I could come before you guys with a with a, a video. Um I don't like to half ass, you know, I have to have the the right information before I do these type of videos. Um so that I could get good input from you guys. The news reporter was like, you know, well, the jury had to side with the prosecutor on that. It's like, okay, so okay, I can see where it may be every now and again, every blue moon it may be possible to stumble into somebody else's apartment. But the whole part about pulling out your gun and shooting them in their own house and they're unarmed, it, it's just something the jury could not get past. So they had to give this woman something. Um, for murder, I, I would have to say 10 years is, is ridiculous. I think that's ridiculous. She took this man's life. She was in his house. He, did, he was unarmed. Why are they only giving this woman 10 years? I, I don't quite understand. I, I don't quite understand. Um, it's a lot of stuff about this case I don't understand. I don't understand um, what was the what was the fucking point of the judge coming off the bench and hugging her? What what's up with all that? I mean, I I don't I don't quite understand. I mean, did she do this after the brother hugged her? If if he wants, I'm gonna tell you how I feel about the whole situation with him forgiving her. Okay, if if that's what he wants to do. Who are we to judge what he wants to do and, and what he feel is going to make it right for um, him and his creator? Because majority of the time when people forgive, I'm not saying all the time, but majority of the time when people forgive, they, they normally do it because, you know, they, they have some type of religious reasons. Oh, well, you know, I, I, I got to get right with God. And how can I expect God to forgive me if I can't forgive others? You have a lot of people that are, are very, um, very much eager to forgive 
for that purpose. And then you have others that are eager to forgive because they feel like um, it's freeing for them. And it is. It, it really, really is. If you think about it, it is. It, it just makes you bitter and unhappy and miserable on the inside when you're walking around holding grudges on people. Sometimes you just need to let that shit go. You know, it, it builds and builds and builds and builds negative, negative emotions over time. And it's just not necessary. It's like, yes, it was very unfortunate that this, this young man lost his life. Very unfortunate. And I'm sure if we all could bring him back, we would, but we can't. Once somebody is deceased, they're deceased. So he's probably looking at this shit like, okay, well, my brother's gone. I can't bring him back, you know? And, and she's, you know, coming across as if she really, truly, genuinely means within her heart that she didn't mean to do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it go. I mean, that's, that's probably how the brother is looking at this situation. And technically, um, I can't, I can't judge him for that. If, if that's what he wants to do, if, if, if he feels that that's the right thing to do, I'm going to leave that alone. You know, I, I've, I've seen enough posts where they're attacking this man because he was forgiving. They're attacking the judge. Now, the judge, that part I don't really understand. That part I was lost. I'm like, you know, we, we have no control over who shows affection to who. But at the same time, it's like, what what does the judge, what what was her reason for hugging her? Did, did she feel sorry for her too? I mean, you know what? With the way that judge showed affection to Miss Geiger... I would bet any amount of money that if that was a, a case being, um, you know, being ruled by um, a, a judge, she would have got off. <laughs> she would have got off with, with the or her sentence would have been light as a motherfucker. She probably would have had like a, a six months to a year probation for goddamn murder. So. I don't, I don't know. I, I can't, I, I just can't, I can't judge that man for what he chooses to do. If, if he chooses to forgive her, let that be on him. Let that be on him. Now, I, I, I got, I got so caught up in my opinion that I, <laughs> I forgot I got more reading to do. So let me go ahead and finish. The conclusion of the trial mirrored the gamut of emotions displayed during the week-long proceedings with Jean's parents stand, taking the stand um, with testimony about their son. Geiger saying she wished she were the one who was shot and prosecutors describing the former cop as negligent and missing signs that would have tipped her off that she was on the wrong floor in the wrong apartment. I think she's just kind of... I think she said that she got caught um, uh, in the wrong. I, I think that's what this is. I don't think it really has too much to do with... I, nobody knows for sure. Nobody can say for sure whether or not she's genuinely sorry. But only she knows that. But the way it looks to me, it looks to me like she's just sorry she's getting ready to do 10 years. She don't want to spend no time behind bars. I, I think it's more of that than anything. Jurors convicted Geiger on Tuesday for murder in the fatal shooting of Jean. Wednesday, after hours of moving victim impact statements, the same panel sentenced her to 10 years in prison. She'll be eligible for parole in five years. Well, with the way this case is going, I, I feel like in five years she will be granted parole. I would be really surprised if she wasn't granted parole. With all the support she getting from the family and the judge, I would not be surprised if that woman, um, I, I'd be surprised, I'm sorry, if, if she was not granted parole. A lot of times parole is denied because the family comes in and contests it. They're like, no, we don't want this person back on the street. You know, and they do everything they can to convince the parole board, don't let this person out. They are a menace to society. You know, so with the way, now I, the mom... I'm not 100% sure. Well, I, I, well, I ain't gonna say 100% sure, but I, she, I, I couldn't fully, I couldn't fully tell where she stood. 
I, I know she was definitely happy that the officer got some time um, because she she they they took a picture of her in the courtroom, you know, thankful that she was sentenced to something. Um, but just because she's thankful that she is sentenced or maybe sentenced to something doesn't mean that she doesn't forgive her. You have some family members, their their loved one is murdered and you know, you're glad that they're ar they've gotten arrested and they're getting ready to serve time, but you still forgive them. You still go to jail. You visit them. You got some family members that actually do that. They they write the murderer back and forth, you know, um, keeping in touch, you know, they, they want you to do your time, but they just, they still forgive you. So I don't really know where the mother is with all this. Um... After the conclusion of a case, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. After the conclusion of a case that has become part of the national conversation around policing and violence against people of color. Right. See, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, they, they just really, um, they really making this a racial thing. And I can see how, because she's, she's white and he's black. A group demonstrated in the streets of Dallas against a sentence they saw as too light. NAACP President Aubrey Hooper said in a statement that the organization saw the sentence as inadequate, but prayed that Jean's family could find some closure with the conviction. The trial brought several moments of pain before the powerful example of forgiveness. A video of Jean's final moments as first responders worked to revive him from gunshot wounds was shown while his family was in the courtroom. They left sobbing, and Judge Tammy Kemp said she had, hasn't considered the hurt it would cause his loved ones. Then Geiger took the stand to describe through tears the night she said she entered Jean's apartment thinking it was her own and shot the man she thought was an intruder. She said she wished she had been the one killed instead. I don't know. I don't, know. I, I, I don't think she wished she was the one killed instead. I think she was the one who wished she didn't get caught. Wrong, you know. Of course, it's obvious she did it. You know, she there was no way in the world she going to be able to get around the fact that she did it. But I don't think she, I think she wanted to get away with it. Um, and, for, and for some, for some, for some people of color, this is, um, this sentence is better than nothing. Because in, in the past, we've had black people killed innocent black people killed by the police and the police got acquitted they got off scot-free but this woman is not getting acquitted so you got some people with the opinion okay well you know um at least she's getting something it, it's it's still not long enough of a sentence for taking somebody's life usually when you take a person's life you get life in prison your life is taken but she'll be eligible for parole in five years and i can almost guarantee they're gonna grant it she's gonna be out Miss Geiger gonna be out in the streets. 2024. <laughs> 2024. She's gonna be back out on the street. I, I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that. <sighs> okay. At the sentence hearing, at the sentencing hearing, Jean's brother, 18-year-old Brant, asked the judge for permission to hug his brother's killer. I don't even want you to go to jail. He told Geiger, I want the best for you, because I know that's exactly what Botham would want you to do. Thursday, Gene's father, Bertram, I think that's how you pronounce his name, told CNN that while he wishes Geiger's sentence would have been stiffer, he accepts the jury's decision. I felt the same way as Brant. I wish I could have extended that same courtesy, he said. That's what Christ would want us to do. If you will not forgive... Neither will your father forgive you. And I just said that a few minutes ago, earlier in this video. I just said that. That's how a lot of people look at forgiveness. They feel like if they don't forgive, God will not forgive them. So they're really forgiving for them. In their minds, they're forgiving for them. So that's what this is about. It's about he wants to make sure that he makes it into the gates of heaven because he's forgiving. He's forgiving his brother's killer. 
I don't want to see her rot in prison. I hope this will help change, help her to change and recognize the damage, the hurt that our family is going through. So I wish her well, and I will pray for her family and pray for her as well. Well, she's not going to rot in prison. She, I mean, rotting in prison is not going to be the case for Miss Geiger. She's going to be out. She's going to be back out on the street. If not five years, ten years. But I can guarantee you, it'll be five. Hell, it may even be less time than that. Because the family is not, they're not, well, the brother anyway. I mean, the, the, the father says he wishes that she had a stiffer sentence. So, the brother, if, if he got anything to do with those um, parole board hearings, I think he's going to speak up for her and be like, I really think she should be, you know, released on, on she might want to fuck her. <laughs> you never know. You never know. I mean, I, I, should I have said that? Maybe not. <laughs> should I have said that? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe that was going a little too far. Um, but you never know what somebody motive is. You, you never know. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I hurt for that family. They lost a family member. I hurt for them, you know, but it's just, I, I have mixed emotions about the forgiveness part. I, that, that part right there. And, and then you got people on social media talking about religion. You know, I don't get into all that religious stuff because I mean, I do believe in a higher power. I, I believe in God, but I don't, I don't, I don't incorporate that in my videos. I don't talk about that. You know, I, I just, I, I leave that out of what's factual. And I give my opinion based off of facts, not uh, religious beliefs. I, I don't go there. You know, I, I do believe in God, but I don't go there. So I, I just feel like um, the, the situation with, with him being forgiving because of, of uh religious reasons and and him being bashed on social media because of it i'm staying out of that part I, you know because my, my feelings are mixed there i get where he's coming from i i get what he's trying to say i i get it but at the same time um i'm not gonna judge that not not that part not the religious part, because that's that's his right. He can he can he can believe whatever he wants and he can have whatever reason he wants to to be forgiven to this woman. You know, he being judged big time on social media. I mean they they not letting that shit down. I mean, it's like every other post that I see, you know, when I um when I log on to Facebook and Twitter, it's it's about you know bashing the brother because the brother um, shit, this book is tore up. I'm sorry. Because the brother has forgiven her. And it's like, why, um, why are you bashing that man decision? Leave that man alone. I mean, well, it's, it's, it's in the public. It's, it is in the public. The, the, all, the whole story is all in the public. It's been in the public for weeks. Um, so you, you can't really... You can't control people's opinions when your story and your business is being put out there. And the news made sure to put that shit out there. So, you know. It, it is what it is. I, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to judge that man because that's his, that's his, that's his choice. He, he could, the, the, the statement I made a few minutes ago about he, he might want to sleep with her. Um, who knows what that man motive is for, it what I'm saying is if I'm saying if if he if his real reason if, if that's really his reason is because of religious reasons, then I can respect that and I'm not gonna touch that. But if he has other intentions behind why he's so forgiven to this woman, it, it could be that he like her. It, it it could be it could be it could be a multitude of things. Who knows? But as far as the religious part, I'm just going to leave that shit alone. Okay, so what's really in her heart? In closing arguments, prosecutors and the defense 
split on whether this was a case of a woman with prejudice or a public servant who made a terrible mistake. So, of course, the African-American community believes that it's a woman with prejudice. Prosecutors introduced Geiger's controversial text messages and Pinterest activity. They show what's really in her heart. One po prosecutor told the jury she argued the text illustrated how Geiger was mocking the death of Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, now see, I didn't know that part. Ooh, we see, I, I, I watched, I watched the news, and then I skimmed over this article. First couple of paragraphs, I said, yeah, this looks like this would be a really good article to go by for this video, and then I looked at a few video clips. And I was just, I was like, you know, this, this, this would be good to read from. I think I skipped over this part. I did not know that she was mocking the death of Martin Luther King. Okay, so then that right there would indicate some racism. That would indicate some racism. She's, she's probably a racist. Okay. <laughs> okay. That, I mean, that, that's, Okay. Okay. Prosecutor Laquita Long ended with text on a screen from one of Jean's pastors who said recently to the defendant, he was just a silhouette in a room. To everyone who knew Botham, he was the brightest light in the room. But, no, no, let me say something about that. This is, this is not to take anything away from, from Botham Jean or the Jean family, Jean family, however you pronounce their name. No disrespect. But how come every time when somebody die, it's always, oh, that person was the brightest person in the room. Or that every time that person walked in the room, they lit up the room. I'm, I'm sure Mr. Botham Jean was innocent in this case. I'm sure he was. Especially if he was just shot dead and he had no way to defend himself. I'm sure he was innocent. Even if he was mouthing off of her, she still didn't have any right to shoot him dead. But come on now. Nobody's, nobody's that perfect. It, every time somebody dies, it's... Oh, this person was the brightest person in the room. Or every time they walked in the room, they lit up the room. I'm not taking nothing from him. Because it is really fucked up that this man lost his life over something so unfortunate. However, people just need to... People, they just... It's like, it's the same choice of words every time. No shade. It was a reference to Gaga's testimony when she described seeing Jean in his apartment for the first time, saying she only saw a silhouette. The defense urged the jury to look at 31-year-old Gaga's life as a whole. Her years-long dream of becoming a police officer and how she put her life on the line every day at work rather than the snapshots of life through text or social media comments. Well, of course the defense going to do that. Yeah, of course. They're going to, oh, well, how y'all going to go by social media stuff and, you know, just, just look at her whole life. Well, because people put how they feel on social media every fucking day. Somebody putting how they feel on social media. So that was the perfect place for the, you know, for them to look to see how she would, you know, to get incriminating shit on her. And it worked. Why would you mock the death of Martin Luther King and you just supposedly innocently shot a black man? Come on now, you you really making yourself look bad. So I mean, I, you you given you you given the African American people a, a reason to be enraged when you do stuff like that. <sighs> Defense attorney Toby Shook acknowledged that there have been police shootings in which police get off when they shouldn't have. But he asked the jury not to bring their opinions into the deliberation. Of course. Of course he of course not. Of course he's not gonna ask them. Of course. Cause that's that's gonna hurt that's gonna hurt his case and he ain't gonna win. I mean this this shit is just Okay. This is not the this is not those cases, he said. This event was planned. He said this was so unique. You'll never see it again. The sentence. For the sentence, prosecutors had urged the, the jury to choose no fewer than 28 years. The age Jean would have turned on Sunday. Ooh. The defense team asked them to consider Geiger's life 
and service as a police officer. The jurors had to choose between five and 99 years of life in prison. They made their decision in less than 90 minutes. The room was silent when the judge announced the 10-year sentence. After the jury left, the Jean family sat silently, almost shell-shocked. The prosecution team also largely sat quietly, looking surprised themselves. Geiger was quickly escorted, I'm sorry, away. Shouts of no justice, no peace could be heard in the hallway. Protesters were pushed back away from the courtroom, further down a hallway, and Geiger's family was escorted out a secure pathway. Lead prosecutor Jason Hermes walked over to the Jean family in the silent, mostly empty courtroom after the sentence. I'm sorry, he said. I can't explain that. Jean's father shook his hand. You fought a good fight. I think he did. I think that prosecutor did fight a good fight. I think he tried to do everything get that woman in jail for a long time. He got her in jail, but it just it just didn't go the way he wanted it to. He he won, but he he just he just didn't win that big victory of having the bitch put in jail for you know the rest of her life. Brent wasn't the only one who sought to comfort Geiger. In another shocking moment, Judge Tammy Kemp, who gained national attention for her strict and stern style in the courtroom, also approached Geiger. She brought her Bible. You can have mine. I have three or four more at home, she said. This is the one I use every day. This is your job for the next month. It says right here. John 3.16. Lord, no, she did not go in on John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whomsoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I didn't even have to read that. I know that scripture. I know it like the back of my hand. I grew up on it. Why would you? <laughs> if if you, I'm just lost here. I'm lost. I'm lost. If If you're known for strict, stern punishment, why are you hugging this woman? Why? I mean, you can do what you want to do. You can do whatever you want to do. I, I'm, I'm not saying the judge couldn't do it, but I'm, I'm just wanting to know why. Why? I mean, like, you want to be forgiving now? Like, what, what's going on with this? I, it's, this ain't even your problem. You, you talking about forgiving her, and, and unless the judge is related to that family, I don't see why she took that shit so personal. And I'm not saying judges don't take the cases to heart because they're human. At the end of the day, they, you know, some cases they do take to heart. But th I, this one, I don't understand. I, I, I'm i not seeing a connection. I'm not seeing a connection with the judge and this lady, you know. And, and yes, the, the country is shocked. It's like, I'm showing a little bit of footage of that. Just a second. So just a little bit of footage of, well, not footage, but a picture of um, the judge hugging this bitch after what she did. Allison Jean talked to the reporters about her hope for Geiger's time in prison. That 10 years in prison is 10 years of her reflection and for her to change her life, she said. I think that was very good, very good article from CNN. CNN puts out good articles, good material to read from and do videos with and, and learn about, you know, more about the story and, and you know, just, just get good information on it. I'm, I'm not going to hold you guys long. This is the third video I've done that has been over 30 minutes. Um, but, but I feel like if I don't talk about everything, then... It ain't going to be a good video. Or it's not going to be a video that covers all the information. So I guess I just got to take a little bit more time. It, it takes so long to upload these videos. And that's why they, you know, uh, one every two or three hours. It, it actually takes a few hours to encode and export and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I, I guess it's worth it. F uh, follow me on everything. All social media. The ending of this video will tell you exactly where and how to find me. Peace and blessings, everybody. Please subscribe. Subscribe to my channel and click on that little bell next to the subscribe option so that that way you can be up on everything that I upload, celebrity news, reality show reviews, um, celebrity um, celebrity gossip talk, um, current 
events, current news, like this one, the story here, Amber Geiger, Botham Jean. Um, yeah, subscribe and uh, holler at me on every other social media platform. I love you and peace, you guys. Take care.